Have you ever found something that was lost? It was hidden in plain sight? My name is Ruth Dwyer and lucky me, that happened while I was looking very closely at the Church of the Hagia Sophia, built by the Emperor Justinian in the year 537 in Istanbul. Armed with a compass, a measuring tape, and a camera, wonderful discoveries were made. The Hagia Sophia, which is known to much of the world as the Hagia Sophia, was built at breakneck speed between 532 and 537 in Constantinople, now Istanbul, by the Emperor Justinian. He called it the Church of Holy Wisdom. The interior is remarkable, having been built according to the ancient Greek philosophical principle of Symmetria, which was espoused by the 6th century BC mathematician and philosopher Pythagoras. What is Symmetria? It's the balance and harmony of every element, and, according to Pythagoras, every element is united and made meaningful with number. Everything but the entire design scheme is united, joined together, by one basic unit. And what is the basic unit of the design of the Hagia Sophia? As it turns out, we will see that it is the Emperor Justinian's monogram, his initials carved in marble, inside a white marble ring. And what are the components of this building's particular symmetria? They are visual, astronomical, and mathematical. And how could Justinian's architects, Anthemius of Trowel and Isidore of Miletus, pull together such an extraordinary design plan? Because not only were they architects, they were also mathematicians and astronomers. Now, let's take a look at the building, and let's start with the date of its dedication, December the 27th, 537. On this date, Justinian stood with his procession at the entrance of his church to begin the dedication. But all of a sudden, he burst from the procession, ran down the center of the church, and exclaimed, O oh Solomon, I have outdone thee! What did he see and know that would inspire him to be so joyful? It had to be the symmetria, the design scheme which involved the visual, the astronomical, and the mathematical. We'll begin with the visual. What did he see? Well, he saw his monogram everywhere, his initials in white marble, surrounded by a white marble ring. He saw many circles in the building which strongly resemble his monogram. For instance, the circles on the walls with white marble rings, and above his imperial entrance, and on the floors, for instance, at the Empress Theodora's place of honor, and at his throne site, again, the numerous circles with white marble rings. And when he looked up, he saw the great dome, a huge circle, with another white ring, this time in white light. Now, what about the astronomical? What astronomically could have given Justinian such delight? Well, leading to the imperial entrance is a remarkable door with a large arrow. In Justinian's time, the arrow had a crossbar, which is no longer there, but we can still see its outline. Are there any other arrows? Yes, there are. One immediately above the emperor's door, pointing up through a circle that also looks very much like Justinian's monogram. When we compare the two arrows, they both had a crossbar during the time of Justinian. Where exactly are these arrows and the imperial entrance? A floor plan of the building shows them right here. So, what are these arrows doing here? To me, they're asking me to look up. Okay, let's look up. Way up. And here we are on the roof right where the arrows told us to look, above the imperial entrance. And what does Google Earth tell us about this exact location? If we look at the latitudinal coordinates, they are amazing. Do you remember all of the circles we have seen so far in the building? The latitude for this exact place on the planet includes the numbers for pi, and not just pi, but pi to six decimal places. And considering how important Pi is mathematically. In determining the diameter of circles, this is truly amazing. And here I must explain that, 
centuries before the building of the Hagia Sophia, at the time of Ptolemy. Latitude and longitude were well understood. Now, let's ask Google Earth to connect with Google Sky and take us to the same latitude in the heavens that contains Pi, 3141592. It takes us to the constellation Lyra, and particularly to the star Vega. And my goodness, what do we see? We see that the star is a circle with a white ring, and that the latitudinal coordinates include Pi, just like the Emperor's entrance on Earth. And not just Pi, but again, Pi to many decimal places. So, regarding Symmetria, we can see quite clearly a visual, astronomical, and mathematical connection between Justinian's monogram and the star Vega in the constellation Lyra. Let's look again at the throne site. When we ask Google Earth and Google Sky to look at the roof of the Hagia Sophia over the throne site and to take us to the constellation Lyra, what do we see? We see the beautiful ring nebula. And what do we see there? A very colorful sky formation which includes a central circle surrounded by a white ring. Let's get back to Symmetria. We've discussed Justinian's monogram being the heart of the visual and the astronomical. Now, let's look at the monogram's role in the mathematical. Pythagoreans believed that number is everything and that the perfect number is six. How is the perfect number six expressed in the Church of the Hagia Sophia? Remarkably, this too begins from the imperial entrance. When Justinian stood at his entrance and ran through the church, he was on a compass heading of 123.6 degrees. Why does it matter? Because it is the numerical equivalent of an important Pythagorean equation explaining the perfection of the number six. Six is the only number in which the number's components, in this case one, two, and three, whether added or multiplied, always equal six. Pythagoreans apply meaning to number. Indeed, while six represents perfection, ten represents God. Pythagoreans love number progressions, and in the Hagia Sophia we can find a magnificent number progression based on six, ten, sixteen, sixty, and so on, all of it based on Justinian's monogram as a basic unit. For instance, if we multiply the diameter of Justinian's monogram by six, it equals exactly the height of the capital. It also equals exactly the diameter of the queen's circle on which she stood. If we multiply the diameter of his monogram by 10, it equals exactly the diameter of the large central disk at his throne site. And if we multiply the monogram by 60, we see that it equals the Great Dome. What a beautiful number progression this is. Are there other sixes in the building? Well, yes, there are many, in fact. There are six aisle divisions off the nave, six groups of six columns, six round-headed windows in the sanctuary apse, and so on and on. Even the dedication date happened on the 6th times 60th day of the year, December the 27th. What sixteens are there? Let's begin with the throne site and compare it to the constellation Lyra. On the floor there are sixteen discs with white marble bands and sixteen discs without bands. The constellation Lyra, where Google Sky took us earlier, has sixteen star formations. Let's look at them. There is a trinary star system, that is, three stars which revolve around each other, there is a binary system, two stars rotating with each other, and one of them is a red dwarf. There is one evolving, eclipsing binary system, and we can see quite clearly that one disk here is eclipsing another. There are two orange giants. There is a pulsating red subgiant. And here we will take a look at a close-up of this particular disk. The marble chosen is quite variegated perhaps suggesting a pulsating star. And there is, of course, Vega, the white-ringed giant. So, the symmetry of the Hagia Sophia includes a perfect and auspicious number progression based on 6 and 10, and a visual progression from the small to the large, and indeed the extremely large, from Justinian's monogram 
right through to the star Vega. And just look at all of the circles which we have seen. Every one of them is connected to Pi, and Pi is connected to the heavens through Justinian's imperial entrance. What conclusions can we reach? First, given the precision of the star map on the floor and the remarkable matching of it to the constellation Lyra, Justinian's astronomers obviously had the ability and the means to be able to examine the sky with great detail. We don't know how they did it, or what instruments they used, but they accomplished it with great precision. We can also conclude that the design scheme for the Hagia Sophia, based on Symmetria, used Justinian's monogram as the important basic unit of the entire design. The design was breathtaking in its intellectual scope, achieving a perfection of balance and harmony unrivaled. So, the Emperor's entrance was not just a gateway to the Church. Via Pi, it was a mathematical link which gave him a gateway to the heavens. King Solomon was renowned for his wisdom. Is it any wonder that Justinian burst from his procession and declared, O Solomon, I have outdone thee? And is it any wonder that he named his masterpiece the Church of Holy Wisdom? <laughs>